thank you that you have received him to yourself, that you have opened your arms to him and said, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into your rest. But Lord, we also pray for those who are left here to miss him, to mourn him, and to remember. And so, Lord, we pray that you would dry the tears and you would bring the comfort that is so desperately needed today for everyone who mourns his loss. We thank you in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. this time for anybody who wants to say anything about John. It could be something humorous, it could be something serious, uh, but uh, there's a number of people who uh, have something to say and uh, anybody can. Uh, you can stand where you are if you're afraid to come up front, that's fine, but uh, if you can come up, that'd be great. We'll all hear you better. I'd like to say that John, I never heard John say one bad thing about anybody. I admire him too. And I know since he accepted Christ, he's up in heaven building chariots for all of the angels. snowfall and so I was home from college on uh, winter break and I had been introduced to a, a cute blonde girl <laughs> by a friend <laughs> and I was working hard to convince her to date me so after another storm had dropped several inches of snow on the ground I seized my chance to impress the girl by shoveling the deep snow from her roof in her driveway After finishing the driveway, I climbed up upon the steep roof. I don't know why they made them so steep over there, but it was a very steep roof. And I was about halfway done when I saw a really large suburban pull into the driveway I disheveled. So that suburban right over there. So after a few seconds passed, a large, tall figured man stepped out of the suburban lit a cigarette and walked towards me. When he got to uh, where I was standing, he said, uh, you got this? And I replied back, yeah, without saying another word. Uh, the man I would later call my father-in-law turned and got back into the suburban and left. I would later learn in life that I had just had a pretty typical conversation with John. <laughs> That's good. So I spent the next few years kind of supporting John's daughter Rebecca and trying to find a way to connect with John. The courtship was successful and in 1999 Rebecca and I got married and I found John did enjoy talking about the things that were important to John's interests, like hunting, fishing, his trips to the eastern Oregon deserts, and classic cars were usually high on his list. The topic of family was his favorite. From John's grandpa, reason, even Sizer's work ethic, to his daughters, Judy and Rebecca's accomplishments, John clearly valued his family. John always said that his girls could shoot as good as any boy. John's so proud of his wife. Barbara and his daughters Judy and Rebecca. And he 
is a special place in his heart, in his heart for his four grandchildren, Ethan Isbell, Reagan, and Carson. John loves his parents, Sam and Mary, and Ethan Sizer, and is happy to see them move back to Southern Oregon several years ago from Portland. There are so many fond memories of I have spent with time with John, crabbing on the Oregon coast, fishing with John and Coos Bay and Gold Beach, trips to the desert, holidays, vacations, car shows, and for the past year living with John and Barton. Some of you may not know this, but recently John and his dad, Sam, were baptized. For years, we have prayed for a miracle, a miracle cure to John's diseases. Instead, God chose to use John's illness to cure his soul. We mourn as a family because we miss all of the things that we love about John. But we also rejoice knowing where John is and that we get to see him again. In his last days, John was telling old friends of his of the importance of knowing God. I value my relationship with John and so some of the funnier things that I can remember about John is <laughs> we would often go to the desert to uh, Hughes Bay to go crabbing and on one of those trips um, the MS was pretty bad so what was nice about going crabbing is that John still had good use of his arms and so he really enjoyed driving his boat and so I would back or Dave or I would back his truck in for him and he would run the boat. And so on one occasion I backed him into the water and went and parked the truck and I came back and I noticed that water spraying out both sides of the back of the boat. And I got in the boat and I said, well your bilge pump sure are working good. There's pumping water out both sides and probably the most I've ever exceeded excited I've seen John he said go get the truck <laughs> <laughs> because we forgot to put the plug in the <laughs> <laughs> on another fishing expedition on uh, in Coos Bay um, we went out and we trolled the river for hours and caught a couple of really nice fish saw the sheriff's boat waved to the sheriff's boat got back and cut the fish up took pictures with them and it was only then we realized that we caught illegal fish. <laughs> but they tasted just as good. <laughs> um, probably one of my most recent stories uh, was a car show in Canyonville not too long ago. Uh, we always enjoyed going to their fall festival and John always enjoyed winning the trophy while Barb's car sat there with no trophy. <laughs> <laughs> so on the way back, on the way back from the car show, we uh, had a an uh, for a, like it was the heater core hose broke and sprayed antifreeze all over the inside of the cab. So John and I got to spend some time alone together in a little. Uh, wayside along I-5 fixing his truck to get it back to town. But he did it. He was the one that he showed me where to put the hose and bypass some stuff and he got us back. Um, he had a lot of vlogging stories and I heard Judy talking about one of them where he used to hide from the sheriff because he knew that his truck, his log truck was way overweight. And so he would always try to find the back roads to get around the, the waste cave. Even up until just a few days ago, uh, you know, John was always willing to pitch in and help. John had some friends over that were visiting, Excuse me. and one of them mentioned that there were a couple horses running loose in the backyard, which one might think that's normal at our place, but it's not. And so we were all chasing horses out there, and here comes John on his scooter and he was trying to herd horses even to the last day. So, he's a remarkable guy. One thing that you didn't hear John uh, talk about too much was his time in Vietnam. Um, you know, I don't know, <clears throat> probably a lot of vets are that way, but John um, 
he's a, the, his family has a long history of service. So, I think his uncle Dan was a World War II vet right over there. Um, his dad is a veteran. And so, you know, a lot of those guys don't talk about stuff like that. But um, I know that he shared a few things with Dave. And and I printed it off, but one of his uh, friends that he served with in, uh, in Vietnam wrote a story about his first day when he got to Vietnam and John was there. And so I printed off some, a few of them, so I'll leave them for you guys to read, but it's, it's a short story, but it's kind of uh, just sums up John. So I'll leave these for you guys to read. Um, Not as far as the, the stories, but I just uh, appreciated John, and I uh, really felt blessed that in the last few days that we had with him, that I was able to tell him. That's all I got to say. Heaven, I think he's flying. 